Good morning, everyone. I have missed you. I've been in Minnesota for a week and a half. And as I was telling the choir, Pastor Kim, marvelous Pastor Kim, called me yesterday and said, did your flight make it or do I have to have a sermon ready for today? <laughs> and I spoke but one or two words and he said, oh, you were in Minnesota, I hear it. You got the <laughs> accent back. Well, you know we're both from Minnesota, so that's where we hail from. Warm welcome to everybody, wherever you are in the journey of life and faith, you are always welcome at Agnes Day. For those of you that are participating, uh, online at home, you are always welcome to uh, be part of communion, just so that you know that. When we consecrate the elements here, you have your wine and bread ready and commune with us. It is Christ's table for everyone. All right, one very important, and I've been talked to twice, I thought about it on the way over, but it was reinforced. You have these marvelous little palm leaves and if you haven't read the directions on the very back of your bulletin, please know that you are encouraged, invited, and encouraged to write down a prayer request. Very short. God already knows what's on your heart. This is for the sake of the church here. Uh, at the offering, the ushers will collect these. There are pens in little baskets, in case you don't have one. The name of a loved one the name of someone you're praying for, a nation you're praying for, a situation. But uh, these are specifically not large. You, know, you can't write a lot like a preacher might spend a lot of time writing on here or preaching too long or something like that. Just short, just a couple of words. They'll be collected and by Easter, these will be on our Stark Lenten tree in full blossom. So I encourage you to be part of that. Let us begin our time with a moment of silence and reflection. Before we stand for confession and absolution, Jack, just a big affirmation for your marvelous work as an acolyte. Thank you. Please stand as you are able for confession and absolution. Blessed be the one God who writes the life instructions on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. 
Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Welcome. I'm glad you're here, Larry. Holy God, we confess we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors grow hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things and for sins only you know, forgive us, Lord. Amen. Out of the gracious love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongdoings, and restores the promise of new life through Jesus Christ. Amen. is with you. O oh God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayer. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Kids, it is time for the magic drawing board. The magic drawing board. Come one, come all. Look at the smiling faces. All right, the green. I need the green. We got more. How about a red for you, sweetheart? And the blue. You are so happy and waving those branches. Thank you. Who didn't get one over here? There we go. Can I have one? Yes, you can. All right, this morning, you guys, I'm going to have to sit right between you two. Is that all right? Can I put you on this side? You're all very special people. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself when I was a teenager. All right. Now, I had a team that I really, really liked. Uh, his name was Mr. Monty. I've forgotten him. Mr. Monty. He was from Yugoslavia. All right, you want to get, you can stand behind me? You can. Now, in those days, this was very long ago. I wonder if anybody knows what I'm drawing. A schoolhouse. You are so close. Amazing. A lock. Chalk. What a chalkboard is? Wow. You're easel in your law. Uh, um, 
Yeah, whiteboard. And nowadays you have many, many more things beyond a chalkboard. You were living fun times, but we had chalkboards. And I wonder if anybody knows what that is. An eraser. Oh, <laughs> oh an eraser. And should I put a piece of chalk in? I need another color. Yeah. All right. Can you hold that for me, Jack? Okay. Here's a little piece of chalk. Would you like to see what Mr. Monty looked like? Uh -huh. Now, don't laugh because I'm not a great drawer, but he had very interesting hair. He was a very good teacher. Really? Did I tell you he was from another country? I'm still on education. And he mocked. And he would, he had a long arm with a long finger. He would point to things. I had him for a class called civics. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's about the world and our government and all kinds of stuff. It was great. I liked him so much that I, this is a picture of the, our, our world, different countries. He really taught me a lot about different countries. One long arm and one short. That's just the way it came out here. All right. Now I need another color. Yeah. Well, that one I had already. Right. That's a black. Let's see. Well, you all got all the blacks. How about that blue one? Thank you, sweetheart. All right. Now you're wondering where are all the kids? Those are the kids. Where's you? I'll show you where I am. I knew you were going to ask that. Are you right there? Right here. Were you right there? Yeah. Where's your eye? Well, we're looking at the chalkboard. <laughs> I'm always asked about the eyes, so I figured this out when I was gone. Just have them facing the chalkboard. It's much simpler. All right. <laughs> now, we're all, we're listening to Mr. Monty. I'll put his uh, he was so uh, fun to listen to, and he was so smart about the world. And I was a little scared kid. This is back when I was in eighth grade. I was scared, but I really liked him so much, I told my dad, I really like Mr. Monty. He said, go talk to him. Go talk to him after school. You can come home late. That's all right. I wonder if you know if I went and talked to him or not. I bet you did. I did. It took a lot of courage, and uh, to him, and he was so kind, and so helpful, and he made me think about the world in a different way. So I really liked him. Now today, I'll make a little line here. There are, I'm going to say two. It doesn't tell us how many, but there are two people who really liked. And I wonder if you know who I'm talking about. Mr. Monty. Well, the, you know, this, Mr. Monty, the board. Here's a little hint. Uh, Jesus. Jesus. You're so good. And uh, Jesus, as you know, had a heart of love for everybody. Yep. Mr. Monty said that too, by the way. But Jesus, well, these guys were very interested in Jesus. And they wanted to meet him. And... We don't know if they ever did or not, because the story doesn't tell us. But if you were to ask me, they, they met him. And he taught them, God loves everybody. And you get to love everybody, too. And it'll be a fun ride. A wonderful life. Learning to love everybody. Okay, what do you think of that? You have these marvelous people in the congregation, you guys. And I want you to know something. I'm serious. They love you. They like you. And they want you to grow up into very fine, loving people, which you're already doing. I already know it. So let us pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Holy Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the church and for the people of the church who help us love like Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's uh, time to go with your teachers to...
Yeah. Thank you, guys. Here. I love you. Thank you, Wyatt. Do you I, want to keep this? I do. I do. And I'm so proud of you. Thank you for giving that to me. You're a great kid. Our first reading is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, for the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life.
Our second lesson is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 5. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of the flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears, to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his relevant, his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, oh, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, the voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. may be seated. Grace and peace to you from Christ, the one who draws all people to himself. Today's lesson is a little prelude, a little teaser, uh, or what is the new word for that? Uh, Spoiler alert. (laughs) For Holy Week. Oh, you get the cross here today. And you get Jesus talking about the cross and what the cross means. And it's vital for us because next week is the beginning of Holy Week, Palm Sunday. Which, by the way, now I just remember, bring your jackets. (laughs) No, it's, uh, this is moving us into the conclusion of Lent, Holy Week, Good Friday, Monday, Thursday, Holy Saturday, and eventually Easter. And it starts very simple. Some foreigners, not the Jewish followers of Jesus, who were the first. You know, the first ones. We were the first. No, Greeks. Gentiles. We don't know how many. I drew two on there for the kids. Some Greeks, some Gentiles. Yes, yes, some uncircumcised people came to see Jesus. Now, 
This is a chance for me to, as preachers like to do on occasion, too much, but I'll do it. That word C is not like you might think the, the soft form of C. Like we'd like to see Jesus, like maybe from behind a tree, we'd like to see what his face looks like or the color of his hair or his beard or something you know, shallow like that. In Greek, there are these strong nuances of the word see. No, they're not wanting to get a glimpse of his face or his robe. They want to know him better. That's the strength of this word. In fact, uh, a stronger nuance, and it could be this one, is they want to even, yes, live with him, become his disciples, his followers, like those Jewish ones. But they knew, because this was an old fight in the old days. There were the Jews, the chosen ones, and then there were those others, the heathen, the Gentiles, with all their ideas and so on. And they come to Philip. And uh, Philip, you know, he, he becomes the magnet. They respectfully come to him and say, we like to know your master, your mentor. This Jesus, either they had heard about him, you know, there was these great crowds that Jesus drew to himself. Jesus has a drawing power all the way through the New Testament. He's always drawing people to him, and they're drawn to him either by love and excitement or sometimes conflicted. But he's always drawing people to himself, see? And Philip, I know this is just for free. This is my little idea about what happened. It may not be right. I'm going to say it anyway. Why did they come to Philip and why did Philip go see Andrew? Because this was a major move in the Bible. A major move in the life of the early church which started with 12, you know, disciples. Then there were 70. Then there were 170. You know how the scripture tells the story. And I think, for my money, Philip was wondering... The Gentiles, uh, we have a nice little relationship with our master. It's cozy. Are we going to extend this to more people who look different, who don't even speak Hebrew, probably uncircumcised? Uh, I'm making all this up now, but I think it might be close. And so he, he doesn't want to take the responsibility of figuring this out by himself. He calls Andrew. Let's talk about this. Aren't we having fun by ourselves in our parochial little gang? And, uh, well, they don't come up with an answer, so they go to Jesus and ask him. And Jesus gives an answer, Jesus style. It's not yes or no. <laughs> you know that Jesus is a character. He's always talking in metaphor. He's always going deep. And it's that deep stuff that he says that has always both enlightened me and haunted me. Uh, Jesus, one of them says, Andrew or Philip, we don't know. These Gentiles, these Greeks, they want to know you. Uh, they want to learn from you. They, uh, Jesus, I think they actually want to become your disciples like us. What do you think? Now, what does Jesus say? <laughs> He's crazy, beautiful, strong. Unless a grain of wheat, what? Dies and goes into the ground, it remains just a what? A single grain. You see where this is going? But if it dies, oh, I forgot, what does it bear? Much fruit. Every farmer, every gardener knows this. My grandpa from Minnesota was a farmer. He knew this. All farmers know it. You've got to die to have life. And I'm betting that Part of what Andrew and Philip were learning is that they had to die to the parochialism because Jesus is the Savior of the whole world. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That includes those uncircumcised Greeks who had heard about Jesus and wanted to do more than get a glimpse of him. See, that's what I think for my money. All right, he just says more. <laughs> He still doesn't answer yes or no. He's giving them something, some fodder, some feed to think on, to reflect on, to take into their heart. He says, this marvelous phrase, those who love their life in this world will lose it, but those who hate their life in this world 
will gain it. Now, here again, <laughs> just so you know, I went to seminary. Hate here, <laughs> hate here is not emotional hate. Like, you know, people say, oh, I hate that person. That's not what it means. It is a typical Jewish idiom that is a contrast between two things that the author of the words wants to make so clear that he or she uses hyperbole, exaggeration. You, in comparison with the old life, with Caesar, with the emperor, with the powers that be that destroy people in order to gain for their own ego's sake, if you hate that life, then you'll love the new life. It's a comparison. Um, and that's powerful words. Why does he say that? And then he has, says one more thing, that, and this is very instructive, not only for those Greeks and for Andrew and Philip, but for us. Um, Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. Jesus is giving good, fair warning. The life he's bringing, and these Greeks heard about it, all this unconditional love, which they were drawn to. But he says, just a warning. Where I am, my servants will be also. And he goes on to say, my hour has come. For what? <laughs> the Christian life is a dying to the old, a hating, yes, a hating of the principles of hatred that are rampant in this world. And we know it all too well. But it is a new loving of the new life. But he wants people to know this. And by the way, it could bring hardship, even death. Um, we all know the news that broke, you know, about Alexei Navani, uh, killed almost exactly a month ago in a Siberian prison camp, a work camp, which reminds me of Marion. <laughs> I can hardly tell the story, and so I won't. It'll be a sermon for another time, but I'll just tease you again. Uh, I met this Marian who was Russian uh, in Kandapoga, a little community north of Kandapoga called Deravyanka. And five of us went into her house, little tiny village, um, nothing there but some houses. It looked like something from Fiddler on the Roof, these little huts. And she wanted to meet the American bishop. She wanted the group to come to her house. She had tea. Her house was a building with sheep in it and chickens in it and everything else. Uh, very, very poor. And she came and she was going to kiss my hand. I said, no. <laughs> but I gave her a hug. Anyway, she told me about her husband going to a Siberian work prison camp and dying there. And her son. And then she went to her uh, cupboard and picked out an old, very dusty and very blotchy picture of her husband, and she kissed it and made the sign of the cross. She said, in Russian, I had a translator, Bishop, we are Lutheran. We remember Christ's words above all others. I'll never forget that. It was translated to me. I just, I was crying. It was so powerful. Well, Alexei Navalny, well, we know that he was a very famous uh, crusader for justice and peace in Russia and spoke out against Putin regularly and was poisoned. Uh, he was supposed to be dead three years ago in 2021, but a month ago he was, he was killed. And Putin hated him so much he would never even speak his name in public. Well, everybody knew who he was talking about. But... What many people don't know is that Navalny had become a Christian. And I think that what he did is exactly what Jesus is talking about to those would-be disciples, the Greeks. Um, it's clear Navalny expected to die. And he went anyway. He went back to Russia after be a second time to continue working. And his wife, and if you haven't seen the movie yet, I haven't seen the documentary, uh, it's called, uh, it's on CNN and HBO, simply a, doc a documentary called Navalny, I'm going to see it, I couldn't see it when I was up in Minnesota off the grid, there was no, uh, there was no, it was way up north, 
No. Navalny chose to follow Christ. And it brought him the greatest of hardships, didn't it? And yet he knew the Christian story. He knew the Christ story. He knew what Jesus is talking about today. Let me see that again. What does it say? I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Do not think for a second that what Navalny has done is not bearing fruit. Well, maybe not in the time frame we would like, but this is a mystery of grace, the mystery of love, the mystery of Christ. It happens and it will continue to happen. Oh, it goes on. Those who love this life the way it is will lose it. Those who hate their life in this world the way it is will gain it, will keep it for eternal life. Navalny knew this as a Christian, and he went anyway. Oh, one more thing. Whoever serves me will follow me, and where I am, my servant will be also. And this applies to us. Now, this is a bold case of following Jesus, and every context is different. But we have been chosen to not only feel the joy of the Christian life, but to live it fully, which means living for other people. Uh, for all other people. Because the very last verse says it all. It sums up the whole thing. And I, when I am lifted up from this earth, will draw all people to myself. This is a way to begin to think about Holy Week. To begin to think of the holy mystery, which I told you last time, in the words of the poet Auden, is beyond all knowing and liking. It is a power unto salvation for the whole world. No exceptions. It's so powerful I can hardly speak it. I'm still so enthralled by the upside-down, tipsy-turvy kingdom, reign of God's unconditional love for all people. Um, what happens on the cross? He gives us a little answer. Jesus does. Destroy death, sin, and evil forever. It'll be nailed with Jesus to the cross and done away with. And secondly, to draw everyone to himself. Christian, think on these holy mysteries. Let it bother you. It's okay. Let it give you joy. It's marvelous. It's a both and, see? And know that your efforts are never perfect, but, and here it comes, sin boldly. <laughs> That's a Luther phrase, one of his great contributions to the church Catholic. He said, or he said it often, sin bravely, knowing that all of our efforts are never as good as Jesus. It's all right, we're human. Sin anyway. Boldly, know that part of what you do for others still has a little taint of what's in it for me. That's what Luther's saying. I'm going to talk about that next week at the uh, forum, Palm Sunday. Um, we, we have this selfish gene in us. And I know we'd like to say, we really don't. But you know what? Get over yourself. <laughs> we really do. And God loves sinners. Like me. Like you. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is not yet come. Live into the wonder of the hardship and the joy of following Jesus today. Amen.
free restless heart in your arms the world's awaken you have loved us from the start we your children gather round you at the table you prepare sharing stories tears and laughter we are nurtured by your care. Mother, brother, holy father, spoon spirit, only son, we would praise your name forever, one in three and three in one. We would share your life, your passion, share your word of world made new ever singing, ever praising, one with all and one with you. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Iona Creed together. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of all humankind. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He died alone and forsaken. He descended into the death to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present throughout all ages, and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit burning with Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath within the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of all resurrection and eternal life. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and the world in need. God of the covenant, through the church you draw us into community, we give thanks for the grace in which we gather. Inspire writers, musicians, and artists whose creative gifts adorn our worship. Hear us, O God. God of all that exists, you lavish the earth with extravagant beauty. Preserve the rich diversity of living things. Support local, national, and international efforts to protect the environment for future generations. Grant that we may continue to grow in our ability to safeguard your creation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of the nations, you desire peace and plenty for all people. Defend those who challenge oppression and expose corruption. Support advocates for human rights, social justice, and the welfare of children. Hear us, O oh God. God of goodwill, you restore what is broken. We pray for those experiencing estrangement, conflict, or abuse in relationships. 
Protect and comfort all who are vulnerable, especially those living in institutions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is God of every time and place, you are with us. Bless, help, and guide the Agnes Day Call Committee. Give them wisdom, insight, patience, and help as they do their work for this community. Support the ministries of prayer and care in this congregation. Move us to reach out to any who are homebound, lonely, grieving, in treatment, or ill. Hear us, O oh God. For what and for whom do the people pray? Hear us, O oh God. God of promise, we give thanks for the saints whose faith inspires us. Grant us faith to trust in your everlasting love. Hear us, O oh God. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you.
Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts we have gathered to share that all people come to know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in Blessed are you, O Lord our God, creator of the cosmos. Blessed are you, O Holy Christ, our brother and our Lord. Blessed are you, O Holy Spirit, our guide and our strength. In the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. He blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and blessed it. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and shed for all people for the forgiveness of their sins. Do this then for the remembrance of me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Those of you at home, please have communion with us. It is for all people. All are welcome. You may be seated.
The body and blood of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you now and into the life to come. Amen. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Just a couple of announcements that I have, and then maybe you have some too. Again, uh, well, next Sunday is Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week, and the, the uh, marvelous little palm leaves will be here as well. And we'll collect them as we did today. And you'll see that Easter tree blossoming with new life on Easter morning. Please take a look at the Holy Week schedule on the back of your bulletin. It's kind of got a little dark. Cindy knows how to draw attention to things. That's good. Um, this Saturday, the 23rd, is the memorial service for Daryl Higgins. And Kathy is here today. Let's support our sister in Christ. It's at noon this Saturday, uh, March 23rd. Also, uh, Phil, our marvelous Phil Waite, is giving the forum today, Thirsty for God. And uh, next Sunday, I'll do the forum, and it'll be my fourth, What Lutherans Believe, and I'm going to bring up the sin boldly, brave boldly, or sin bravely. <laughs> I'll get it straight by then. And uh, it's a marvelous concept, and it frees us from all the fundamentalism that is all around us. It frees us. So I hope you come. All right, are there others? Yes, Debbie. She's coming to the mic. Coffee is important to many of you, so I thought I'd come up here. <laughs> Remember to please sign up for coffee hour. You do not have to bake. If you do not want to bake, you can bring things. You can sign up as a team. We're working on streamlining it so that it goes a little quicker. We're making regular coffee in the bigger coffee pot and just decapping the small pots so you shouldn't have to wait as long. Also, on the outside of where you pick up your coffee and cookie, there's a, a short uh, cart with brown trays that you can put your dirty cups on. So that's out there for the first Sunday. And remember, if you don't know how to run the dishwasher, it's okay. Someone will teach you, or there are also some of us who come up on Monday and Tuesday and check that it's been done. If it hasn't been done, we'll run it then. So please sign up because we don't, we don't have treats and coffee. By the way, if I may just add one little addendum to that, I happen to know, because I came in the door at the same time she did, that there are freshly baked scones this morning. <laughs> I'm going to run over there and get the first one. Yes, Phil. Thank you, Phil, for all your theology on taps. It's the kingdom of God and the church, and what's the relationship? And David, you have one. Um, having, uh, following Pastor um, idea of uh, something to show you, this is your old um, directory, and we're going to start updating it, uh, and we're going to do it two months, uh, April and May, for those that you need more time to do it. And we'll start Easter, and back there, um, by the, the, that wall, will be a place where someone will help you fill out this form. And this is what it looks like. It might be a little longer, the one you actually get. There might be a little bit more information, but it'll look something like this, and they'll hand them out on Easter Sunday and the following Sunday, and then after that, uh, they'll be just there, and you can fill them out. And there are some wonderful volunteers that have agreed to uh, come and help this is how you spell your name and do those kinds of things. And we will also take a new picture. So look at these, look at this document and say, oh man, I need, I got a better shirt than that, if nothing else. <laughs> and um, we hope to uh, have you all do it. Thank you for Cindy. She's been doing a marvelous yes. job and she always updates this and just struggles. So we're kind of all just helping together to make Cindy's life a little easier. So thank you very much. Thank you, David. And by the way, with everyone's permission, can we give Cindy a hand for all the work? Please stand for the benediction and the closing hymn. Beloved, you are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you 
shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Amen.